Justin Rhodes here. I've taught thousands of people to grow their own food with minimum input to maximize output. Today, I'm giving you a free sample from my paid membership area. Entirely free, no cost. It's one of our members' most favorite videos. It's on the Nomadic Gardener. He both gardens Florida and Maine, and he travels back and forth, you know, Maine in the summer, Florida in the winter. And so he, anybody else knows how to quickly get started with gardening. I did an interview with him surrounding that subject. Check it out, I hope you enjoy it. If you like that and want more of those type of instructional, kind of raw videos, more info for that down in the description. Hey Jim, you got a bunch of fans out there, buddy. They've sent you a lot of questions. They're serious about growing. They want some advice from you. How do you get up to speed so fast? Well, so, I mean, fast as far as where... So you're going from Florida to Maine, and you've got to get going started. And these people may not be nomadic farmers, but you've got to get things growing fast, and you've got to get your market fast. So let's speak to how do you get things growing quickly? You know, I've been doing it for 10 years, right? And I've got a lot of community connections, so, you know, I know how to do it really well. I just, the first thing I do when I get to Florida, before I even unpack, I start my seeds. You know, I get okay. the soil block okay. going. You know, because you can't sell something that's not growing. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm a little behind here, but again, I've, I fit into where I want to be. And Coleman will show up June 1st with 30 vegetables. I'll show up with nothing until July 1st. But the people that started early, I'm going to fill in where they're running out. So I've filled a niche there. Okay. So, um, but to get up to speed, it's just being on top of it and then knowing when you can take a break. Sometimes I like to read novels. I'll read, while I'm up here, I'll read 60 novels during the summer. Nice. You know, because I like doing that. But when something needs to get done, no novels, I just go for it. Yes. You know, I am my own boss. I love that. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, what, what was the other side of that? Well, that's how you get started with your uh, garden. That's what you prioritize. You plant seeds right away. Probably quit growing stuff like lettuce, I imagine. Um, Things you know, like that or not? I want to have it until, you know, I know when they start to suffer, so I've got my, you know, I don't really got a planting calendar, but my brain has a calendar. Okay. You know, it's an, you know, you become an indigenous person when you're on a land for a while. Okay. And the land speaks to you. I mean, I call it garden fairies. I know it's kind of crazy, but, you know, I don't have this big list out. I go out there and I know what I need to do because I've been doing it so long. Yes. And so to give somebody this recipe for how it works, it's get to know your land's the best idea. Yeah. You know, and your customer base. Like Salatin says, your customers will follow you, so you deliver what they want. Well, let's speak to that then, because you're, you're coming from Florida to Maine, you're not here all year round, so how do you quickly get your customer base? Where's your customer base coming from? How do you actually have a market, somebody to actually well, sell to? You know, permaculture, it's a, you know, they talk about diversity, so I think that's incredibly important in markets. So I've got, and it's so similar in both places, I've got a small buyer's club in Eastport okay. and in um, Florida. Um, okay. The Eden Harvest Co-op in Florida. Then I've got uh, two farmers markets in Florida and one farmers market here. Oh, okay. Um, I sell to a retail outlet in Florida. I sell to oh. a retail outlet here. Um, and um, then I'll do and then I'll do events, but not many events. I've seen people usually want to be entertained at events. Yeah. Farmers markets are rocking because they come with their bags. They want to fill them up. Basically, you're going then to places that are doing marketing for themselves. And you're one of the suppliers that shows up, like Farmer's Market, for example. They're doing all the marketing. They're getting all the people to the market. And all the farmer needs to do is show up with something to sell. Show up with quality okay. and consistency. Okay. You know, you got to be reliable, you know, all the time. And I am that. You know, even when I don't have much, I'll show up just to talk to people. Okay. Um, because that's important because they want that connection, too. Yeah. You know, but I am, have a, I do have exceptional quality. You know, this well-grown organic vegetables last twice as long as even poorly grown organic vegetables. Okay. And people realize that, so they'll find me. They knock on the door. You know, nice. I do no promotion. I've, I've something yeah. I learned, you know, attraction rather than promotion. I was part of a group that that was one of their themes. And it's such an important thing. I don't have to promote. You know, you show up and next thing you know, you know, people are calling me for interviews all over the country. That's right. And I didn't. You know, it just happened because Pete brought you by, which is yeah. cool. You're making that connection. Yeah. But I didn't go look, oh, how can I get my Facebook page read more or whatever. Yeah, call Justin. No, yeah. you, you were just doing epic stuff and people take notice of that and they want more of it. So, okay, you spoke about organic vegetables. What does better 
Or what do you do in the north that you can't do in the south and vice versa? So people are watching this from all over the, all over the country, probably not nomadic, but they want to know what does really good up in Maine versus what does really good in Florida. You know, you're going to deal different with, are dealing with different soils in each place, but Maine, uh, for me, um, winter squash, garlic, onions, potatoes, they're all killer. They'll okay. produce three, four, five times as much as they will grow on the same crop okay. for me in Florida when I'm there. You know, I don't, I mean, some other growers do better in different time frames down there. In Florida, mid-season cold time, which who thinks Florida's got it? But we get frost where I am often. Um, and all yeah. the cold season vegetables, kale, broccoli, all the lettuces. They grow like 70 kinds of lettuces. Uh -huh. um, I'm trying to think, arugula does killer down there because I don't got flea beetles. I don't know why. Here I got flea beetles, I don't grow. You know, I'm okay. learning, yeah. if you're fighting against something, don't do it. Do it three or four times and then give up if it's not working. Yeah, cool. Next, uh, what do you do with the gardens when you leave? What do you, if they miss that vlog, tell us more about it. What do you do with Florida when you leave and what do you do with Maine when you leave? Again, when I was talking about how I spend my time, that's the time when I'm not reading novels because you want to put things <laughs> to sleep well. So the last, you know, so you left and it was still pretty going, right? And I don't yeah. know, that was like five, six weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, it was really going. It was jamming. You had not planted your sweet Right, potatoes. so within three weeks of you leaving, I finished my markets. I cut everything off at the ground because I'm a, I'm a fan of what the Kaisers and Singing Frogs Farm do. Yeah. You know them? No. You need to visit them if you're in Sab Sebastopol. They're pioneering farmers. But anyway, so leave all the root mass in the ground. Why okay. pull it out? You've got okay. a corporate organic matter. Cut everything off. I'll compost uh -huh. the tops. Then I brought, believe it or not, 110 yards of compost across that whole floor to half okay. acre. Okay. Compost, That's, not mulch. Three, well, see, I'm, so it's this year because it was so dry in Florida, the stuff that usually composts pretty well, which I figure is three quarter finished compost, you saw how wood chippy it was eating. Yeah, it was very chippy. This was chippy. like twice as wood chippy because there was no moisture. Okay. So it looked more like mulch, but there's still lots of little um, oak leaves that are starting already to decompose. Okay. So, so 19 truckloads of old red across that half acre. So okay. two weeks of two or three loads a day. Of compost? Yep. So you bought it? No, that's the free, remember the yard waste that comes free from my municipality? I just go get it, they give me six yards at a time, it's only... Okay, so when you're saying compost, I'm thinking of about finished compost. No. But you're talking about mulch that is going to turn into it's compost. It's municipal yard waste. Oh, okay. But I okay. think we, like you say, if you, you value things, they become valuable. If okay. we call it yard waste, nobody wants it because it's waste. Right. I call it compost. Okay. Because it is. It's, it's that's plant, what it is. it's the food for the microherd, just like I'm doing with the grass. So I'm doing yeah. similar things. Yeah. I'm using grass here as my fertility concentration. I'm using the uh, municipal yard waste as a fertility yeah. concentration there. And so if somebody is from Florida, this applies to them because they can grow their garden during the winter and then plant the sweet potatoes. Yep, and then so then I planted 1,600 sweet potato slips. Yeah, okay. And then black-eyed peas, and I shouldn't say black-eyed peas, it's a variety called iron and clay, yep. which is a southern pea. Okay. which I read about that says it has nematode suppressing qualities. Yeah. The root knot nematode suppressant. So now I've got a legume crop mixed with my sweet potatoes that um, suppresses nematodes, okay. potentially. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. And then the idea that, you know, that if I was there, that's an economic crop too. You could be harvesting the, the peas as a green bean mm -hmm. and as a, you know, finished pea. Um, so it's a multi thing and it's always shading the ground because that'll be just a mass of green. Yeah. So there's no sun hitting the ground and there's root occupying the ground. I don't, fallow is not a rest. I think it's missing things. If you don't got the roots in the ground that are working with the soil life, you're missing a boat. Kaisers talk about that a lot too. Let me talk to you about these novels. Everybody wants to sit down and read some novels or, or watch something or whatever, whatever they do to relax. But the way you do it, because you're mulching, I think you can sit down and, and, and read a novel, right? Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you have seasons where you have to plant your seed and cut your grass because it's spring. But then if you put that grass on the gardens, you have a lot less to work to do. Is that fair? There is definitely, you know, that whole thing. If you do things well, it eliminates a lot of the maintenance. I don't weed. Think about that when you, I don't weed in, in Maine. I don't water and I don't fertilize. Josh. You know, it's yeah. pretty much like Kaiser says, it's all harvesting and planting. You know, which yeah, is a funner so time. There's a lull. Yeah. In the middle of the summer where you're not busting your butt in the heat that you can read your novels. And I'm a bachelor and I don't chase women, so you know, <laughs> I, I have no social life, So I, and I love reading novels. Good, well good for you, man. That's happiness, isn't it? Doing what you it love is. with your time? It is, I mean, it's So when people ask joy. you, what do you do, what do you say? What, when they say, hey, hey Jim, nice to meet you, what do you do? I Most of the time I say I'm a market gardener, but okay. I, I like the idea that, 
the itinerant <laughs> farmer. I like that better because um, they it, it, the idea that I'm a traveler too. Yeah. You know? You're also a, a novel, uh, not a novelist, because unless you write novels. Well, I'm thinking about it. Well, there you go. You're a novelist. You know, or, you know at least you a novel reader at this point. Definitely. I mean, that's yeah. Reading's really good. I love it. All right. Um, okay. I think we might have answered this, but let's let's be redundant here. How do you amend your soil? And I guess what this guy further asked, this is a question from Casey, it sounds like you amend your soil just by mulch, but do you treat certain vegetable beds different than others? Like, do you amend your onions? Where are you gonna put onions different than if you were gonna put lettuce there? You know, usually I try to think in terms of a whole space. You know, I think there's a critical mass there. The thing I don't like about a lot of the garden spaces that most people do is they think in terms of these beds, which are small spaces. I think, you know, when you're talking, and I'm not a scientist again, but that whole mycorrhizal network, you know, in Florida, that half acre is all garden space. There's no separations for paths. I'll make the paths when I start planting, but I could be planting in last year's path. Mm. Okay, so that whole thing is covered. So you've got all that mycorrhizal network never separated. There's no place for weeds to sprout. Um, as far as amendments, you know, like I say, I'm taking, you know, four inches of three-quarter finished compost and putting that on Florida twice a year, okay. right? So think about that's like 20 years of forest litter. Yeah. Think yeah. about, and okay. I'm doing that twice a year. So, okay. you know, I might be missing certain macronutrients that ain't coming out or micronutrients that aren't coming out of that um, waste stream for whatever reason. But if that's the case, then those plants that need that will not grow as well and I'll have given up on them. Okay. And the ones that love it, oh, okay. I just go for it. But also the thing about the amendments is the soil blocks are amended, right? Because yeah. I use soil Coleman's mix, so I've That's got right. micro amounts of azomite, colloidophosphate, green sand, and uh, blood meal, right? So yeah. that's little bits. But, and the granite sand, which is a big deal. You know, that's got that paramagnetic effect, potentially minerals. And I'm putting 10 to 12,000 of those soil blocks into Florida, that half acre, every year for 10 years. Mm. So there is some amendment there. And the same thing here, I don't do as many, I probably do four or 5,000 soil blocks into here. Yeah. But these soils are so powerful as far as the difference between Florida soils and these with a the clay. Yeah, okay. Um, the fact that I don't have to water, you get capillary action even with a you oh, know, okay. six week drought. And I just thought about that. Think about the capillary action. So if it keeps, you haven't broken the straw with by tilling, right? So it just keeps pulling moisture. And mm -hmm. after a couple weeks, or three or four weeks, it's pulling moisture from maybe two or three feet. Again, I'm not a scientist, but that's what I'm imagining. And think about that subsoil moisture, which probably has dissolved minerals. Mm. So nature's helping you pull minerals up just because you didn't tell. Nice. I think it's awesome. Beautiful, thank you. I think we might have one more, we might be done. Oh no, this is a new one. Okay, one last question. Are there any laws prohibiting what you grow? Are you running into uh, law restrictions? You know, I've, honey draws more than vinegar or whatever that whole thing. Because okay. I know a lot of permaculture people that want a garden. You know, they're kind of anarchists and they just want to grow whatever they want to grow. And yeah. the front yards become, you know, let's just say unsightly. You yeah. know, and the neighbors don't like it. It's been the total opposite for me because I have the ornamental background. So I place those vegetable plants in a, a very pleasing pattern. People take pictures not knowing it's food. So yeah. that even okay. if there was laws, the, the city manager is bringing people by to show them how beautiful it is. Yep. So it's not I an issue. It. So, you know, you might need to break a permaculture law or two just to get along well with your neighbors, which is the premise of permaculture, is to love... Or, or well, to... you know, the thing is, I think we're, you know, not giving nature its due because nature produces beauty and function. Yeah. I think us, we try to shortcut things and it comes ugly. Yeah. But if you work with nature, it's beautiful. You walk around those woods that are full of walnut or trees oh, yeah. and, and it's gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. look at the scene behind you. Right. Nobody's touched that. And there's clams out there and there's <laughs> trout in the streams and there's wrinkles <laughs> on the beach. Nobody's complaining and nobody's, about that. And nobody's, nobody's doing it. <laughs> right? Nobody's <laughs> farming that. Yeah. But I mean, farms are important. Salatin's yep. word about the idea, what's the difference between that land and farmland? The farmer. I think that's so important. We gotta keep growing farmers. Yeah, farmland is not farmland without, without farmers. the farmer. That was, he's, he's such a powerful speaker. So, yeah, so the, what, what we're gonna tell people is beautify your yards and go for it and nobody's gonna complain. No, if you do it right, you know, people, you know, and, and give them some veggies, give them some fruit. 
Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Jim. Your wealth of information. We appreciate it, buddy. Thanks Keep for coming by. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you guys are interested in more videos just like that, I have a paid membership area that you get one to two, sometimes more of those type of videos, hands on how to type of stuff, plus a private forum where we could get on there and ask each other questions, encouraging each other. I'm gonna leave more info for that if you want in on that down in the description. I would love to see you join and be a part of that. Thanks.